Mercedes Benz is known to make some of the best luxury sedans in the business, and that shows in how their saloons continue to outsell every other luxury car in the Indian market. Now, that is a big feat, but at the same time, I think the timing is great to say that the sky is the limit for luxury SUVs because you see, in the upper tiers of the SUV spectrum, the luxury brands have found a way of affixing their esteemed emblems on high riding automobiles. And the latest to join that fancy fair is the Mercedes Maybach GLS 600. And at least for the Indian audience, it is not just another pricier variant of the standard car. And that is because most of the newish technology that left us baffled on the new GLS but never came to India is standard on the Maybach GLS. So what you will sign the check for is not only exclusive paint and upholstery but also the very cutting edge of technology available on production spec fossil fuel cars. I've often seen customers walk into a luxury car dealership and buying the car of their choice in a heartbeat but in the colour and specification that is available with the dealer. With the Maybach GLS however, you don't want to make an impulsive buy that might make you feel short change later. This is the kind of car that you don't pick from an inventory. It's the kind of car that you personalize to suit your taste. There's an elevated joy in choosing the paints, the materials, the finish. Think of it as something as therapeutic as customizing your abode. But also remember, only your guests can see the kind of choices or the kind of customizations that you've made inside your home. But with a car of this order, the whole world sees what your taste is. It's a rolling advertisement of your wealth and celebrity status. The Maybach GLS seen here is done up in a two-tone combination of black lowers and maroon uppers. At the time of this test, this was the only two-tone Maybach GLS 600 to have landed in the country. So you get an idea of the kind of exclusivity that it offers. If I had to choose, I would probably go with the emerald green and Mojave silver combination. The Maybach GLS wears a three-pointed star on the hood like the old times and despite its position, this car ensures a high degree of pedestrian safety. I think the chances of the Maybach GLS hitting a pedestrian are tiny, not only because it has pedestrian detection and brake assist, but also because I foresee most of these cars rolling down the streets unhurriedly and in a stately manner. Also, it is hard for a pedestrian to not notice a car this large and gleamy arriving towards them. It has the same wheelbase as the standard GLS, but the two-tone paint and the vertically slatted grille makes the Maybach appear a size larger. In fact, it is 31mm wider on paper. Some might classify all the chrome and shine to be bling, but on the road, it fits well with the aura of the Maybach GLS. The broad D-pillar wears the Maybach emblem, and this is the highest position at which it has ever ridden. Save for the paintwork, the upright grille and the massive chrome lures in the bumper, the Maybach shares its lines and peripherals with the GLS. These multi-beam LEDs are adaptive of course, which means they will auto-level, they will also illuminate a corner or road shoulders as per your steering angle. And that's not all, because these are the adaptive type, they'll also adapt the illumination to either highlight all the hurdles in the road for you or reduce the glare for the oncoming traffic and they also work exceptionally well on our B-roads and highways. Adding further function and form to the Maybach's poise are the beautiful wheel choices. And while the Maybach hubcap will rotate with the wheel, if you know you know, these massive wheels contribute to making the Maybach 15mm taller than the standard GLS. You can unlock the car conventionally using the key fob or you can simply keep it in your pocket, walk close to the car and touch the door handle and it will unlock itself because it has proximity sensors. The suspension will also lower itself for making ingress and egress quite easy. And if that wasn't enough, every time you open the door, a running board appears magically from the rocker panels to allow you to climb into the cabin in a dignified manner. And then either you or your chauffeur doesn't have to hit the door hard because there is a soft close function. The insides hold very limited resemblance to the standard GLS, like the two screens and the squarish vents. 
Like the exterior, even the cabin is draped in different colors and material choices. Our test car's cabin complemented the outer look with a tan and beige upholstery and lining and inlays made in open pour walnut wood and high gloss lime wood. All of this is customizable to an extent, but I think I'll pick this combination over the blacks or whites that are offered otherwise. The feeling of stepping into this cabin is quite overwhelming. Now, because this is not a three-row SUV like the standard GLS, you get 93 millimeters more space here in the second row. And as you would expect, you also get all the opulence that you would want from this badge. The seats can give first-class airline seating a run for its money. Sure, it can't lay flat for you to nap, but offers extremely comfortable seating and support for all your hind muscles. And what more could you ask for? There's every possible setting that you would like. You have two screens for all your entertainment. You have these pillows for additional luxury. You have these head pillows as well. And in terms of the seating, all the adjustments that you expect are right here. From the reach to the 43 degree recline to even setting the intensity of the bolstering. You can customize all of that. The seats are complemented further by individual trays for work or snacks and the latter is complemented even further with a refrigerator for the Dom Perignons, their shovels and the chateaus and holders for shiny champagne flutes. An elevated cradle wirelessly charges your phone and another embedded cradle holds a Samsung tablet that works as a remote control for the windows, sunroof, blinds, media and the 64 color ambient lighting. Two screens at the rear of the front seats take care of the rear seat entertainment, which is complemented by a fabulous 13-speaker Burmester audio unit. The Burmester audio not only sounds fabulous, but it also helps towards negating the road and the powertrain noises that could creep inside the cabin. And that makes for a quieter cabin experience. So luxury is completely taken care of. As for the seats, the rear seats as well as the front get a heating, cooling, as well as a massaging function. So no matter which seat you're seated in, there is enough luxury in each and every corner of this car. As for the rear seats, of course, they are more luxury oriented, but the front seats, they are more about the technology for the road without much compromise. The Formula 2 screen setup from the GLS runs a similar MBUX OS and NTG6 telematics too. But there are some additional features embedded deep within the menus. Like the car wash mode, for example, which when enabled will automatically raise the vehicle, fold the mirrors, turn off the parking sensors, the rain sensors. So the headlamps won't go on, the wipers won't go on. It will also automatically roll up all windows, shut the sunroof uh, so that the water doesn't enter the car. Almost feels like I am in a car wash at the moment. That's the kind of rain we have. There's also the energizing comfort, which essentially uses inputs from the attention assist to try and understand, try and gauge when would be a good time to ask you or urge you to take a break, have a coffee maybe. At the same time, it can also get inputs from proprietary fitness band to again get an idea of when would be a good time to uh, give you a massage or give you a whiff of the cologne or even change the tempo of the music so that you feel a bit fresher, a bit more vitalized. Speaking of the cologne, you also have a fragrancing system. Now the number eight mood, that's available by default, but from what I remember Mercedes-Benz telling us during the drive of the S-Class or the GLS, you can have different options even for the fragrance. So for example, you can have the aroma of leather if you want the cabin of your car to keep smelling new all the time. That's a good feeling. Or you can also have the aroma of the woods, probably the ones that you are never going to drive into. If you want to beat the convention and don't mind scratching the expensive paint, the Maybach GLS can very well venture off the beaten path even with its fancy shoes. Between them and the chassis is the state-of-the-art suspension which is controlled by the quick 48-volt electrical system. Called the Electronic Active Body Control or the EABC, this function can not only adjust the damping and the compression at different corners of the car, it can also raise one particular wheel if, you, if the need be to get over a hurdle. Also, you can use the function to rock the car if you need, get into off-road mode, get into the off-road assist, get into free driving mode, and the car can start rocking like a low rider. Now this is, of course, a very cool feature and a conversation starter but it finds its use in the real world 
if you are stuck in a sticky situation like maybe sand, slush and you want to rock the car out of that, this will come in handy. Now with the kind of weather that we are in and with the road tires that this car is running, I'm not going to be doing that. And I think I should stop doing this as well because it's making me look ridiculous at the moment. But you get the drift. In the real world, the prowess of this suspension translates to an exceptionally cushy ride. Using the front-facing camera and radars, the big Maybach can detect most of the speed humps as well. If you slow down for them well in advance, the car will practically mimic the feeling of the wheels lifting off the hump without letting the undulation upset the cabin. It's a surreal feeling and one that sets the Maybach apart from its rivals. In fact, I have experienced some of its rivals and some of them don't even come close to this car with the kind of ride quality that they offer and that too on our roads. Mercedes-Benz doesn't make motorcycles but they have mastered the art of making some of their cars lean into corners to counter roll. The Maybach GLS with the EABC is the latest example of that feature. And this function ensures that this near 3-ton SUV tackles bends with an air of stateliness. Now the curve mode is not a mode that is intended for sportier driving around winding roads like these. For that, you have the sport mode which will stiffen up the chassis, also give you a more direct feel from uh, the steering. The curve mode is more suited for relaxed driving around winding roads so that the composure of the cabin is maintained. The occupants don't uh, get tossed around. They feel that composure. They feel more comfortable inside the car. It will also help reduce uh, the effects of motion sickness. The motivation for this car comes from a 4-litre V8 made by AMG. And honestly, I've never heard an engine that has come out of a Faltabach and is this silent. Now, this engine will feather out about 560 PS of power and 730 Newton meters of torque. And I say feather out because it never wants to overwhelm the occupants of this cabin. To that effect, the car features the Maybach driving mode, which flattens the acceleration curve, tones down the vibrations and noise levels even further, and shifts earlier to avoid the slightest transmission shock. Even under braking, there is hardly any nose dive, and the braking forces, they don't feel sudden at all. Even when you step on the brakes, they just don't feel sudden, at least inside the cabin. But the braking figures are quite good. Now, the EQ boost function from that 48 volt mild hybrid system will add another 21 PS and 250 Newton meters for situations that need you to take off or even uh, pull overtakes. Now this kind of torque fill or additional torque and power that's available from the system will essentially ensure that there are no unwanted jerks or sudden surges of power. Now this car is a conversation starter by itself, but to garnish that torque further when you're talking performance, it can go from 0 to 100 in five seconds. That's tested figures. You would have to be in sport mode for that though. The aforementioned EQ Boost also contributes towards reducing emissions and improving fuel economy. The gearbox works efficiently as well and even in the sport mode, its aggression is restricted to the engine bay. It puts power down discreetly via the 4MATIC all-wheel drive and even around the bends, the system works efficiently without much understeer. The powertrain is aided further by radar-guided assistance like adaptive cruise control, automated braking assist, collision detection, blind spot warning, etc. And all of them work surprisingly well even in our conditions. The cabin is secured by eight airbags. Now these radar guided systems don't just work surprisingly well in India, they also work surprisingly well in conditions like these where it's foggy, where it's rainy. Now if I were to engage the cruise control, which I won't because I'm driving at a very slow speed around these turns right now, but if I were to engage the cruise control, even in conditions like these, it can easily detect the vehicle in front. It can adapt the cruise control speed to match that of the vehicle in the front. And the moment that vehicle moves out or I move out of the lane and there is a, a free road in front of me, it will just come back to the set speed again. Another nice function of the radar guided system is the lane keep assist, which will not only help the car maintain its lane autonomously, but will also pull the car back into the lane to avoid collision 
if you attempt to change lanes when someone is in your blind spot, which in India is usually always. Yet, it's a good safety system to have and it does work well even in our conditions. So both with the kind of safety features that it offers or also with the kind of cocooning feeling that it gives you to cut you off from the rest of the world, it feels like a vault on wheels, one that not only advertises your celebrity status but also safeguards it. Priced at about 2.43 crore X showroom, I think it's priced extremely well. It in fact has an excellent value proposition for the kind of kit that it offers. At the same time, it also presents itself as a more practical alternative to the Maybach S-Class. Of course, there is a new S-Class coming and then things could change either way. But there's no ignoring the fact that this is one vehicle that certainly deserves your attention. It isn't hard to see why the first 50 vehicles allocated for India are already spoken for and the next batch of configured vehicles will only arrive in 2022. Now, I don't know what to make of a very important statistic that Martin Schwenk, the top boss at Mercedes-Benz India, has told us. Most owners of the Maybach GLS in India are in the age group of 40 to 45. Am I stuck in the wrong profession then? Well, I'm driving the first Maybach GLS to have arrived in the country and I'm driving it before anyone else. So I guess not.